Nation, Tom Burton, your superintendent here, uh, here today with yet another unbelievable distinguished alum, Patrick McCreary. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, Patrick, uh, talk a little bit about your experience at Princeton. Great. Well, I didn't come to my junior year because we were trans. My dad was transferred, and I uh, had just got. I was a three-letter athlete. I was uh, very heavily involved with student government and clubs and so on. In, that, in the 10th grade. And then my dad said, oh, by the way, we're moving to Cincinnati. So at that time, the school was so crowded that uh, they had to set up desks in the lobby of the auditorium for a study room. And so I was sitting in there and the choir room used to be right next to Matthew's auditorium. And uh, Joan Myers was in there conducting the acapella choir during my study hall. And so being brought up the good Southern boy that I was, uh, I stuck my head in after study hall after a week or so. And she was uh, arranging books on the chairs all by herself. And I said, hi, I'm Patrick McCreary. I'm a new student here. I don't know anybody. I'm in this study hall. And I just wanted to tell you that um, wonderful sounds that are coming out of your classroom uh, during my study hall. And it helps really pass the time. Without looking up, she said, Wow, you should come join us. So after about a week, I auditioned and made the a cappella choir. And she took me under her wing. And then shortly after that, she much mentioned to Joe Boyd, who was the drama director at the time, something to the effect of, I have a real live wire here that you need to meet. He auditioned me and uh, I went into a production and did a number of productions uh, while I was there and even directed some and produced some and did some limited touring uh, of churches with a, a group that he had founded uh, within the high school. And uh, I have spent over 50 years now working internationally in the arts and entertainment industry in about every capacity you can imagine. So that's, that's amazing. You've done so much and, you know, Patrick, uh, you know, you shout out uh, Miss, uh, Miss Meyer, who um, I know was taken from us uh, far too soon. I never had an opportunity to meet her, but I've heard such unbelievable things uh, about her and really an icon in, in the Princeton history and uh, Cincinnati uh, arts. You've done such fascinating work outside of outside of Princeton, you know, post Princeton, if you will. I know you had a great experience where you were. And I love the fact I always talk about the Princeton advantage and all these opportunities our kids have and taking advantage of opportunities. Absolutely critical. Can you talk a little bit about you know, like taking advantage of the opportunities that are in front of you? I, I knew for this was my first exposure to music and theater because my previous high school did not have that at all. So I had not done any of that before I came to Princeton. So yeah, I was a placeholder in that. Patrick, I'm sorry. Let, let me put a pin in that for a second. I just want to reiterate to everybody watching that this is why we had the opportunities we have. So Patrick McCreary, who had all these opportunities where he was, did not have the theater, did not have that experience. I'm sorry, Patrick. I didn't know that. That's a big moment to me, especially when you look at your career. You're absolutely right. To have one of the best programs in the state. Uh, certainly at the time, to my knowledge, both music, theater, and speech. And also, uh, John Donnelly in journalism uh, was a very close mentor of mine, and I ended up being editor-in-chief of the yearbook. And interestingly enough, at undergraduate school, I ended up being the editor-in-chief of the college yearbook, too, because of that exposure and that work and that training that I got at that time, too. But when I... Uh, I so I knew... I knew this was a perfect fit for me that I uh, needed to go into the arts because it, it was <clears throat> it was introduced to me at, at Princeton and it, it was just latent in my soul and waiting to to be nurtured and to be <clears throat> experienced. But I wasn't sure what to do with it. And I looked at the North Carolina School for the Performing Arts and other schools, too. And I went to talk with a schoolmate of, of my one of my older siblings from uh, my undergraduate school, uh, who was a, a New York producer and a writer of a Broadway musicals and so on. And he said, 
I said, how do I get work? How do I get experience? And he said, well, when I'm not working, I go out and create, I go out and create work. I generate my own work. And so because of that, over a number of decades, I formed and run and produced and directed a couple of regional touring theater companies. I founded my own family theater and youth theater and theater school in Kansas, which is still in operation. Uh, I founded a touring arts organization in California that did in-school programs all over the state and hired talent to do that. And then I've done radio and television and film and other kinds of things. I've, I've entertained three presidents of the United States, George Bush Sr., Ronald Reagan, and Jimmy Carter. Um, I've toured Europe uh, singing and performing. And so, and so the, the seed was planted at Princeton. And because the, what the, uh, the, the, the instructors that I've mentioned and others saw uh, was, was uh, picking up on my, my enthusiasm and my searching and help bring discipline to what I was doing and focus to what I was looking for. Uh, at that school. And really interestingly enough, uh, I ended up playing the king and the king and I my senior year. Uh, and a number of years later, I came back to the high school for a visit. And uh, a big strapping blonde, blue, blonde headed, blue eyed, all American football player was walking down the corridor from the auditorium towards the front office. And I was walking towards the choir room. And he he came up with a smile from ear to ear and he said, you don't remember who I am, do you? And I said, I'm sorry, I don't. And he, in the king and I, there's the tiniest child that bows out of place and the king looks down and everybody else has moved back. And so he reaches down, picks up the child still in a bowing position and puts him back into line and then steps forward again and the action continues. That was, that was a Principia All-American football player student who had played that tiny child in the production of The King and I in my senior year. That's and I was, just, I was just so delighted. I felt old, but <laughs> I, was so, <laughs> I was so delighted and happy to have made his acquaintance again and to have seen that passage of, of generational interest. He did not pursue theater, but for the school to have given his parents and, and uh, uh, friends to have persuaded him to participate in that opportunity at the school. And this is what it's all about. It's students take the initiative to seek out and to participate uh, in all of the opportunities that are available at the school, but they have to have the initiative and they have to have the follow through to do that if they really want to accomplish something or to pursue something and to fail to succeed and to fail. You learn a lot more from failing than you do from succeeding. But uh, there was a great support structure at Princeton. And rather than berate me, they encouraged and helped to direct and to support me in my two years at that school, ending up getting a senior best and being student of the year uh, at Principia in two years, so. That's fantastic, you know. And I know you've done so much work. Um, portraying Abraham Lincoln. Uh, one of my favorite Lincoln quotes is that uh, I hope to make the world a better place for my having been here. Can you talk a little bit about like what you've done with some of your performances that help students? Because I know you performed in front of lots of students before as well. I believe in positive reinforcement. I, I describe it to students sometimes the first day in class is I feel like that I am the librarian you come into the library and I show you how to access an infinite amount of information and knowledge and wisdom. But it's up to you on how much you go after it, where you go, and how conscientious you are in accessing that and then demonstrating it in your life and applying it to your needs. Yeah, that, that's, that's fantastic. So, uh, Patrick, let's get to right now. Let's talk about some of the big performances you've had. Uh, I know, per, you know, presenting uh, and performing in front of three presidents, that had to be huge milestones in your life. But talk a little bit about what you're doing right now. Uh, one big moment was uh, I had a friend of mine when I was running the theater in Kansas that was a city councilwoman. And uh, she came to me sometime, one time, and uh, mentioned that she was 
she had been elected to the county commission and was moving on, but she did not see anybody that she said qualified as someone who had the city's best interests in mind or who was family friendly. And I and those were things that really buzzed with me. So I ended up running for uh, city council, was elected, and then I was twice elected mayor of the city of uh, 47,000. I had a $52 million budget. And so one of the things that I learned at Princeton and that I had been gaining through the years is that people like to feel that they are being listened to, that their, that their input really matters. Uh, and so it, it was absolutely imperative to me uh, in my campaign speeches that, that I bring the, the action word of service back into the term public service. And uh, as I would be driving around town, if I saw workers working down in the ditches, I would stop and jump down in the ditch and say, how's it going? Do you have everything you need? I would ride with the police and the fire. Uh, I set up one time a month. No, yeah. One time a month at a popular restaurant downtown, I would have lunch there and anybody was welcome to come and just tell me what they, um, what was on their mind. And I would listen. Some people invited me into their homes. We got the city council put on uh, television, local television, so they would get a live feed, a live network feed. And so, but but the main thing is, is that that I've learned from Princeton, and that I've learned, I continue to learn, in the work that I'm doing now, is that. You are served to the degree that you look to serve others. You know, going back to Lincoln, I believe your performance is called Lincoln and Booth. Is that Lincoln and Booth is the one man show that I wrote. Yes. yes. And then there's another one too. But, uh, well, I originally wrote Lincoln and Booth as a two man show. And I plan on having somebody travel with me who would play Booth, but it also would be our, our booking manager and business manager too. Well, that didn't work out. So I rewrote it to where I went into a, a TV studio and I filmed myself as John Wilkes Booth uh, playing all of his part. And so the, the one man show is actually a multimedia show where it, many times I, as Abraham Lincoln live on stage, am interacting with myself on film. Mm which is really an interesting dynamic. And I think it's great fun. That this is exactly what you wanted it to do. There was a, an outdoor performing arts amphitheater in Atlanta called Chastain. And uh, my parents occasionally would take us to see traveling Broadway shows there. And I remember there was an old song and dance actress called Anne Blythe, who was playing Maria Von Trapp in The Sound of Music. And she was riding in this theater truck that had a fake tree and a fake rock on it. And it hit a cable, an electric cable. It bounced over it. And she had to grab, to stabilize herself at the, at the opening song, she had to grab the, the wooden tree to keep from falling down and then started to sing. And at that moment, that magic of that faux pas, that moment, it captured my imagination. And then that imagination came, uh, came into uh, a practical application when I got to Princeton. I had been cast as, uh, in Los Angeles as uh, Cornelius Hackle in Hello, Dolly, uh, under the director of, the, uh, of Ethel Merman's National Touring Company. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that show closed, I was cast in another, I was cast as Thomas Jefferson in 1776 with another theater. And, and then I, about a week after I was cast and was in rehearsal, I got a call from the first theater company saying, we never do this, but the director saw you in Hello, Dolly, and he's doing a production of Showboat and wants you to come play the supporting lead in that. Uh, so would you be willing to come over and audition? And I said, this, you are so generous. Please give my kindest regards to the director, but I'm under contract to another company. But that's that's just been my life ever since then. It's been 
you're, you have worth, you have value. Don't get yourself all tied up in knots thinking like, I have to do this. I have to do that. Be conscientious, be professional, uh, talk with people, take classes, continue to learn. The learning never stops. Go out and see and be seen. But if you get a little sidetracked sometimes, it's for a reason. And something I haven't told you is I was on uh, the staff of Alan Newharth back in the 80s, the uh, chairman, uh, chief executive and chairman of Gannett. And uh, I was in on helping to start the national newspaper USA Today. Oh, my gosh. For a few years, I helped start that newspaper and traveled extensively uh, in marketing and setups for the downlinks and stuff like that for a few years. And then after that, uh, I was touring. I was touring. I toured for a number of years. It's time for me to get off the road after doing it constantly for years and starting a founding a theater, renovating an old movie house that's still there. It's won a governor's award of excellence starting a theater school. And after 13 years, I was invited to come back to my alma mater, my undergraduate school, asked me to come and help with others, help rebuild that department. You just, you never know, but you can't, I, I think from my perspective, I don't think that you can will things to happen. It's not about willpower. It's about willingness, willingness to serve and flexibility, commitment, hard work and vision. You know, Patrick, uh, you've done such a great job of encapsulating uh, your experience at Princeton, all the great things you've done past. I know we just just really just scratched the surface. We look forward to talking more uh, with you coming up here soon. Of course, as always, go Vikings.